Here is my process and workflow for setting up multi-tracks in Ableton Live, in my case for a worship service, but this same process can apply to any kind of backing tracks, multi-tracks, stems that you're setting up for a live performance for a band or a singer in Ableton Live. So here we go. I've got a template that I use for setting up tracks or click. And I've actually got a whole list of clicks for about every song I've ever played. And so usually for setting up a session, I'll drag down the individual clicks that I'm going to use so that I put together the set list right down here, just the clicks. But we will skip on over to arrangement view, set up the tracks. We'll click this button to make sure session view no longer has priority. So we are fully in arrangement view. And also I've got in my template, I've labeled all these tracks with pretty much any possible stem I could be bringing in. So I always end up with a lot of extras, which I'll just delete at the end, but it's good to have them there. It saves a little bit of time. So the song that I'm going to drag in tracks for, I know is in 6.8. It's actually made in 6.4 and it usually works out better uh, as far as Ableton's understanding of 6 to make it 6.4. So we're going to set this up in 6.4. The tempo for it is 150. It's best to get these things done first before you drag any of the stems in. It'll make it easier later. So we'll put in a time signature change. How about right here? Create. Insert time signature change. We'll do six slash four for six four. There we go. And let's make this full screen. Option function F11 on Mac. And we'll go down here to the master track, which is already set to song tempo under mixer. And it's kind of tricky to set an exact whole number tempo. As you can see, you can end up with 122.99, and we pretty much never want that unless you're crazy. So the only way to really get it exact is to set the minimum and maximum windows, either or, to the tempo you're going for. So we'll set the maximum one to 150 so that we can drag that node up to the top. And there we go, we're already at 150. Say maybe the next song is at 75 beats a minute. We could set the minimum value to 75, drag it down, and there we are at 75. So that can work for changing the tempo, making sure you get it exact. That's the best way I know to do that. Maybe there's some other way, I just haven't figured it out. So we've got our song tempo set, we've got the time signature set. Let's drop a marker, how about right here? It really doesn't matter where. We'll say this is gonna be our starting point, which is bar 41. We'll click set. There's our marker, we'll click on it, command R to rename it. Here's the name of the song we're going to pull in. So that'll help us as we're just dragging in the, the, uh, the clips, we can make sure we line them up with that bar. In Ableton, you can pull in files from Finder right over here if you click on this folder. And so I've already got these ready to go. So I'm going to start dragging these in and matching them up with the track titles. So we've got all the clips dragged in. That's probably the most tedious part. It takes a couple minutes just because there's not a way to automatically just drag them all in on the individual tracks. If you drag them all at once, it puts them all on the same track back to back. So we could go in, we could rename some tracks if we wanted to, to be more accurate, uh, like percussion, we could call shaker, we could call this tambourine. So whatever you want to do to make it more organized. And then we could delete all these extra ones if we're not loading up any more tracks over here off to the side. Um, so for now, we'll go and do that. Take out that one. And the extra electric tracks. We'll just do that for now. So we've got them all right next to each other. That'll make it a little bit easier, besides the cues track. So next, what we want to do is warp all of these so that they are locked in, glued to the grid, so that we know we're not going to have any weird tempo problems later. If you don't do that, then sometimes a tempo selected in session view will override the arrangement tempo and the track will play back at the totally wrong tempo. 
and you'll have to manually fix it. And if that happens during a worship service or during a concert or whatever, that's not good. So we wanna make sure we glue it to the grid to avoid problems and make future tempo changes and key changes nice and quick and easy. Uh, not to mention editing will be a little bit more straightforward. So in order to treat all of these clips as one at the same time, we have to go through individually command click to select all of them. And we're actually going to use key command, command J to consolidate them so that logic will be able to read them all as one. Basically it's making them all the same identical length. It looks like they're the same length already, but logic has to fully understand them as identical clips. So that's what it's doing right now. That's the other potentially tedious thing, waiting on the consolidation to happen. It kind of depends on how many other programs you've got running on your computer. So we skipped a couple minutes ahead there. So that's all done and it's rewritten the uh, waveforms, but everything's gonna sound the same, nothing else has changed. What's cool now is that if we go down here, where normally you would see the, the waveform of the selected clip, we see that 16 of them are selected, which is all of them. All 16 of those are selected. And the one that we're seeing is the one up here at the top, the cues clip. Now we can change which one we see right here based on the last one selected. So how about let's command click on the click clip, click on it again. Now we see it, which will make warping really easy. We can just warp right here where we see very clear beats. The ideal way to warp, nice and easy. Uh, we wanna make sure we set our warp mode from beats to complex or complex pro. Um, really anything other than beats because you'll find that the guitar tracks and a lot of the pad ones will get kind of distorted and some weird jittery kind of things will happen just because of the way the audio gets chopped and rearranged when you, when you warp. If you put it on complex, it'll stay nice and smooth. You shouldn't have any problems. So that's always the mode that I go with for doing this. So we'll zoom down here. Let's drop a marker right here on this beat. We'll delete this one on the far left since we don't need it. Let's zoom in really close. Just make sure that waveform's on there if we wanted to. So that marker didn't even drop where it needed to. Let's put one right here at the beginning of the waveform. And we'll put it right there on beat two so that we know the beginning of the click sound is right on the beat. Of course, you could mess with that. You could say, I'd like the click just a little ahead of the beat or a little behind, whatever your preference is. But I'm gonna have it start right on the beat. And then we'll go to one of these last ones and just make sure it's on there, which it should be, unless something really funny is going on with tempo. For the most part, we are in place, actually a little bit ahead. So it almost looks like this track is a hair faster than 150. So how about we'll click here, we'll drag it to right there. We'll make sure that overall things seem to be lining up, which it looks like they are. So we should be good to go on that. We can zoom in really close back here. And yep, very beginning of the waveform is right on the beat, exactly the way we want that. So yeah, everything looks lined up. There's no, no weird offsets to show a completely different tempo. So it is now warped. So we know that every one of these clips will stay together and play together and nothing's gonna get out of sync and we can change the overall tempo down here on the tempo graph and it's all still gonna work totally fine. So that's a big important step there for avoiding problems in live performance. Let's say we wanted to change the key now. If we need to change the key, well, we don't have to change the key to the cues clip or the percussion clips, only the ones that are tonal instruments that actually need their key changed. So we could click on synth bass, acoustic, each of the electrics. And again, we're doing command clicking, individually clicking every clip here. Piano, pad, keys, organ. And now we can go down here and see that all 11 of those are selected. Right now we're in B. Well, let's say we need to go down a whole step to A. That's two steps here, two half steps. So now we could test it out and play it and just make sure, um, which by the way, I'm not doing on this video because for copyright reasons, I don't own the tracks here, nor do I own the song. So I'm not gonna play anything, but you can see everything I'm doing here. So if we wanted it in A, well, it's now in A, so we're good to go there. And that's very quick and easy. 
a lot of times in rehearsals, keys of songs will change multiple times, and then they might change again right before the performance. And so it's good to be able to do that quickly and reliably. Uh, let's see. Another thing I like to do is we've got our audio click channel right here, which we used for warping. I'm going to turn that off because if we had multiple songs lined up here, they'd probably each have a different click sound because different people made each of the multi-tracks. And that's kind of annoying and frustrating for everybody listening to the click. If it's a cowbell in one song and a woodblock in another, everybody's having to adjust their levels and nobody wants to get blasted by a cowbell. Cowbells are kind of annoying anyways. So I've got a click sound I like better that I'm going to drag in from over here back in session view. And we'll find the song that we're working with here, which is 150 right here. We'll click on that MIDI clip, which looks like this. So we can drag that over and we're gonna hear the MIDI click sound that I created here with uh, drum rack. So I got it sounding exactly the way I want it to. So I use this for almost all the songs. Command C to copy, click right here, Command V to paste, and we'll zoom in, Shift plus, so that we can grab the edge of it. We'll zoom out as we drag it over. And then might have to figure out exactly where we want the click to stop. We could have it finish where the, it looks like the cues are counting out the end of the song. Or we could end it sooner if we wanted to do a retard, whatever. So we'll leave it like that for now. So we've now got a MIDI click and we've muted the audio click. Uh, just another side note, every once in a while, pretty often actually, we'll, we might need to make an edit to the track. Say we're cutting a chorus or something or cutting a four measure interlude before a bridge maybe. To do that, really all you've got to do Let's say that this is our chorus, just for doing a sloppy edit here for demonstration. We can highlight all the way down through here. Make sure we've yeah gotten all the way through. Hit delete, it takes out that whole chunk. Now we can select that. Actually we'll, we didn't need to select that really. We'll go and drag that over. Click right here on the cues. We can do a shift click this time. We don't have to do command click. Just a shift click and select all that, drag it over and our edit has been made. So that's just a quick way to cut and paste um, without having to do any work on individual clips. That's the goal here and making this efficient and working quickly, being able to make the edits to everything all at once if possible. We'll go ahead and undo that. Another thing, let's say we wanted to create a volume fade at the end. How about at the end of, we'll start down here on the synth bass track. Let's say that on the on the track here, there's a whole vamp and like a big cymbal roll, a big dramatic ending like a lot of songs have. But let's say we don't want that because we want to be able to roll right into the next song. Well, we can change that. We can go, we could use fades on here. We could do this if we wanted to. Or we can go to mixer, go to track volume, zoom in again. Let's say we want the fade to start right here where it looks like the song actually finishes. And have it just drop out, gradually fade down to nothing right here. So that's the fade we want. Now we can copy and paste this volume curve onto all the other ones to save time. So let's do that. We will select all those, open them up. The trick here is you've got to make sure that you have mixer volume selected on all of them so that Ableton knows which parameter you're trying to paste. If we do copy up here, we uh, right click, copy envelope, which there's a key command for, and then click here. If we don't have track volume selected, it's like it doesn't know what we're trying to paste for whatever reason, so it's important that you do that, otherwise it won't work. Down arrow, paste, down arrow, paste. Pretty straightforward, so we can't really see where we're going here. So nice and quick, we have that exact same volume fade on all of those, so at the end of the song, it's doing a smooth fade. Now we could always change it. We could say, okay, actually we want that a little quicker. Maybe we're even in the middle of rehearsal right now. We realize, oh, we need that to be quicker. It's not, oops, can't do command C there. We do have to do the specific copy envelope. Otherwise the wrong thing will copy. So now we could just make that edit or maybe only on a couple of them. Maybe some of them we want to ring out, others we don't want to. So we can do whatever we want there. So that's just a good quick way to make volume edits. We could even do those in the middle of the song if we wanted to pull out a section of certain tracks. 
changing the arrangement around, it can really be done pretty quickly. And that's the cool thing about Ableton. Audio editing is very easy in Ableton. One last note, of course, this depends a lot on which interface you might be using, what kind of interface you're using to run all the audio out. But I have, well, on a couple of these, I have numbers for uh, which outs I'm using. So let's say, let's say I was really simple this week. Don't have all of these tracks. Maybe I've got something. We could pretend this is the track I've got here. And maybe that's all we're running out through the interface. Go over here to the right, external out, and make sure we're no longer selecting all of them. Click going through one, Q is going through two, and right now I don't have an interface hooked up, so don't have any other options. Then you can go down here and select external out on all of these and select which outs you wanna do. A lot of times I'll send all the keys tracks through one, all the electrics through one, all the percussion through one, if I'm limited in space. Otherwise, ideally, you send them all through individual outputs, but that's not always possible. So I think that is about everything. We'd be good to go here, besides some of the weird things I did here that I might want to undo. But the track is set up, and we could come down here and maybe shrink it up a bit so we can kind of see everything, know what we're working with. We can insert additional markers if we wanted to, like say we knew that a chorus happened right here. We could put in chorus, or if we had a, an additional count in before the downbeat, we could put in another bar over here, another marker over here saying count in, whatever we wanted to do, and that can make things even more organized and make for an even more efficient rehearsal, being able to find spots in the track very quickly and easily. So this is the way that I've been setting up tracks and love to hear any input from somebody who's maybe got even better ways to do it. Comments are appreciated. Feel free to like the video, comment, subscribe, share with anybody who is trying to learn how to set up tracks in Ableton. Thanks everybody for watching.